Greetings, Hugh Chatham Memorial Hospital. This is Mark Reese, pastor of the First Baptist Church in Elkin, bringing you this word of encouragement today. One point of intersection that I have with each of you is the small window of time that I spend in the hospital, encouraging and praying for your patients. Now, I always pray that God will enable each of you to give your best selves to these patients and that the patients will give you their best selves as well. I'm not only inspired by your training and compassionate care, I'm often inspired by the resilience and courage of the patients as well. And I know that you are too. I was visiting a parishioner recently who is caring for his sick mother. He got a bit emotional as he talked about his aging mother in hospice care and how she would often pray for him when he'd try to pray for her. It reminded me of a great story about Fred Rogers, also known as Mr. Rogers. This particular story came from an exchange that he had with a young man with a very bad case of cerebral palsy. The little boy, unfortunately, had been taken advantage of as a child. He had very low self-esteem, and by the time he became a teenager, he was self-destructive and didn't want to live anymore. He always loved Mr. Rogers, though, and his mother thought that Mr. Rogers had helped to keep him alive. So Mr. Rogers made the trip to visit this woman's son. After Mr. Rogers arrived, the boy became very angry at himself and self-destructive, needing to leave the room. But Mr. Rogers waited patiently, and when the little boy returned, he did the strangest thing. Mr. Rogers said, would you do something for me? And the little boy wrote on his screen, I would do anything for Mr. Rogers. So he asked him, would you like to pray for me? The boy didn't know how to respond. Nobody had ever asked him to pray for them before. The boy had always been the object of prayer, but never the prayer. Later, Mr. Rogers was complimented by a reporter for asking the young boy for his prayers and how it surely made him feel better about himself. Mr. Rogers looked at him in puzzlement and said, Oh, heavens no. I didn't ask for his prayers to make him feel better. I asked him to pray for me. I ask him because I think that anyone who has gone through challenges like that must be so very close to God. Mr. Rogers invites us to see others not just as recipients of care, but as those who bear important gifts and messages for us. I'm reminded of a great parable that Jesus offers about sheep and goats. In that parable, the sheep are those who do care for the sick, the suffering, the hungry, and thirsty, and those who are in prison. And the goats are those who do not. It's pretty clear which side of the fence those of you who work in the hospital are on. You are all certainly sheep. In the parable, Jesus indicates that those who cared for these strangers had actually cared for him. He said, whatever you have done for the least of these, you have done for me. The sheep and the goats don't seem to have anything at all in common, but in the story, they do have one thing in common. Neither of them realized what they were doing when they cared for strangers, that they were caring for God. And when they did not care for strangers, they were rejecting the care of Jesus. Jesus' story wakes us up to a new reality. The recipients of our care may be strangers to us, but they are not strangers to God. In fact, many of them are messengers who have as much to give to us as we have to give to them. In my own ministry, I hope that Uh, Something about me always bears the calming, the hopeful, and caring presence of God. And I am learning that those I care for often have as much, if not more, to give me than I do to them. May each of you continue to receive the profound and inspirational messages at work in the lives you are blessed to care for. Until we meet again, may God open our eyes to the messengers all around us. May God enable our ears to hear their voices and sermons the ones that are all around us, and may God open our hearts and enable us to receive the gifts that even perfect strangers may have to offer. And may we remember that none of us are strangers to God. Amen.